really nice to be here and uh, hope we can fire it up and heat it up for, for this session. I'm Christian Cull, I'm from Adomni. This is Ian Clark from Experis Media. How's it going? And then, if you're not familiar with either of our companies, Adomni or Experis, I'll give you a quick overview. So Adomni is a programmatic digital at home platform that has access to over 500,000 screens across 28 different countries and spans across 38 different venue types, which are screens. And Ian here at Xverus Media is uh, focused on an integrated, integrated media agency that uses data driving strategies uh, along with culture and media to drive positive outcomes for our clients. Cool? And so what we're talking here today is about positive outcomes. And so speaking of which, it's about a recent one that we underwent, <clears throat> that went underway for an online education client under for Xverus Media. And we've been having a lot of engagements recently with many different clients and many different activations within Xverus, but this is a recent example that we wanted to share with you. And as you can see here, and at the risk of having a spoil alert, there was a 60% uh, lift in website, website um, visits and, and 56 uh, percent lift in, in website conversions. So I don't know if anybody would be unhappy with those results, but they were they were off the charts. And so what we're gonna do is obviously dive into those results, but I think it's really important to better understand how you actually got there in the first place, right? And, and so that leads us to the first question, which is, you know, when you're thinking about, Ian, how you doing? Welcome to the stage, sorry. Oh, I don't wanna do all the talking. Sounds great. All right, so when, you get, when, you're, when you're thinking about doing planning and incorporating Digital out of home as part of the into in uh, as part of the overall media mix. Like, what is that catalyst to that drives Experis and you personally to incorporate digital out of home into the mix? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you yeah. for inviting me here. Um, it starts off with the client goal. What are they trying to achieve? And then it gets into who is that target audience, and then where is that who located? Um, sometimes creative is taken into consideration. But for this particular campaign, it was a local awareness campaign, and we know that out of home is a really strong driver of brand awareness and almost equally as strong in driving brand recall. And so one of the limitations of traditional out of home in this case is that it kind of sits in one place, whereas digital out of home, one of the things I find really great about it is it can follow you anywhere that you want to go. In fact, just last week, you know, I was at the gym and I saw a, a digital out of home ad for a Domni recruiting. And so I shot you that email about that. So it just kind of follows you around. Um, and you can also attach pixeling to it. So there is this real world tactile brand presence with digital out of home with the ability to measure it digitally. And I think that's a really key component. And then of course there's other factors there such as the flexibility in spending, depending on what screens you're choosing versus how many of them you're choosing. So all those factors went into it. Cool, thank you. And, and by the way, that, that campaign that you saw in the gym was a recruiting campaign targeting those that were interested in uh, new positions. So right. we might have to start uh, taking this offline. All right, we'll, we'll chat backstage. All right, but you mentioned brand equity, brand awareness, and, and I think those are two KPIs that everyone always associates with out of home and digital out of home. You know, the top of funnel always is associated with out of home. But the cool thing about this and what we're looking at here is that it doesn't just solve for those top of funnel KPIs. It does in fact solve for those, those KPIs that are closer down to the problem, the purchase funnel, like driving website conversion. So I can't think of really any other activation that can actually solve for two KPIs in the same activation. One at the top of the funnel, one at the bottom. So it's just unique in my mind. But anyway, Driving forward with with uh, with more about the strategy revolving around incorporating digital out of home, let's talk a little bit more about data. And mm -hmm. you guys are a data driven agency, mm -hmm. and so what was you just unpack for us a little bit more? Like what was the data driving strategies that 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 helped you and in, incorporate digital out of home into the mix? Yeah, that was a that was a huge component of it. Um, obviously, like I said, we wanted to use out of home for this particular campaign. And there are limitations to measuring traditional out of home. You know, for those who have purchased it before, you know, that's measured via GeoPath, which is seeing the traffic past one particular point 
and they measure that, I think, twice a year. But with digital out of home, we were able to take that a step further, um, which was throwing a pixel on the client site to watch people who had been exposed to our ads out in the real world through their Bluetooth or GPS, and then watch them go to the website and then potentially convert. And I thought that was really important for this particular strategy because clients nowadays are used to digital advertising and the deep insights that come from using data to derive those insights. And just with certain traditional platforms, you just don't have that depth of insight because that attribution train just ends. And we want to ride that all the way to the final station to see what they're going to do. So it provided us not only with the ability to see um, what brand awareness, how brand awareness could lead to a brand action, but also proved out the efficacy of the chat itself. So that was key in driving the strategy forward with this particular campaign. Yeah, I mean, even driving accountability into the into the channel was huge too. Sure. I mean, thinking about how emerging this platform is, it's amazing that you can even measure these campaigns to begin with. So having accountability, I just think it brings it to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's let's keep carrying on because what we talked on touched on so far was all right. What was the impetus of bringing you know digital out of home into the mix and and what were the data driving strategies on reinforcing that decision? But now the next phase of this process is like okay, let's choose partner mm -hmm. and you start thinking about all the different programmatic digital out of home partners that are in existence. The question becomes like what was it about Adomni that made it relevant for this activation? Mm -hmm. There was a couple of factors. Um, first and probably the biggest component was speed to market. Um, you know, this campaign came in hot and fast. I mean, I think you might remember how quickly it was. We had less than two weeks to activate it. And, you know, how many of you guys in the audience have gotten approval for a campaign two weeks ahead of time? You get the creative two days before you're supposed to launch, and that client's literally beating your industry newsletters into your inbox on Monday, like, are we live? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the worst thing that you can get when you have no lead up time. Had that this morning, literally. All right, there you go. So it was, um, it was something that allowed us to be much more nimble into this particular activation, just being able to activate so quickly. But aside from just the setup and how quickly that was able to get put together, it was getting that pixel placed on the client website that ultimately allowed us to gather enough data ahead of time to make our learning statistically significant, which was the biggest proving piece of this campaign. Um, there was the RFP process. There was, uh, it was actually one of the more transparent RFP processes I've ever been through, which was nice. You know, I could see every single board I was getting, where exactly those boards were. I could see how much each one cost, how that eCPM was getting affected when I pulled certain ones out. I had examples to use, description, all that good stuff. It really felt like I had hands on the levers, self-serve with a managed service campaign here. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. And then I guess um, it would probably be your guys' expertise when it came to putting together a campaign. You know, like we give you guys hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars, and I expect you to know what you're doing when I give you that kind of money. And I rely on your recommendations for that. Um, so there were a couple components in this campaign where we were volleying back and forth on should we have these screens in this city versus this city and I think you guys made some really compelling arguments to put that in. So uh, all of those components combined was really what led to choosing you guys over the competition. No, that's good to hear. Really, I mean, this is we train our team to, to be nimble, to be collaborative with our clients so you can roll up our sleeves and and fight for the greater good of our end client, to be flexible, to be transparent. So hearing this from somebody that is on the buy side, it just shows us that we're doing the job well done. Mm -hmm. uh, so so you look, if we're looking back at these results, right? Again, to reinforce this was 60% website lift and, and a 56% in, in website conversion, which is obviously is more important than those that are visiting the website. So really, really um, effective campaign. and. And we could all say that this is an effective campaign, but unless we really know what the client expectations are, we, we, we can't really take that to the bank, right? And so, sure. you know, so my question to you is, what was the client feedback after receiving this? Well, first of all, I, I think any client would be thrilled to see something like this. Like these numbers are 
wow, like I loved it. These numbers are so impressive. Um, to know that there was a board somewhere out in the world that if you passed it, you had a 60% chance of visiting the site. And then once you got there, you had a 56% chance of actually converting. Like that's huge. That's, that's why we run media, to get brand results like this. Um, and not only that, this really proved out that digital out of home was not only a great channel, but a great channel for this particular client because of the type of uh, the type of content that they put out. So everything was received really well, awesome. particularly me, because that was awesome. All right. <laughs> and then uh, you know, I come from a measurement background, and so you know, I, there's so many different things that you could do with these reports, right? One is you can just you know, you know hold hands and sing kumbaya and say job well done and pat each other on the back and move on like something never happened or you can actually generate or pull the insights and learnings out of it and, and create stronger plans moving forward right so it's like getting stronger every activation but my favorite approach would be to develop a test and learn agenda so that you can say like all right let's set up this campaign let's set up this measurement so that you can extract these important details out of it like which creative perform better, which venue types you know, perform stronger, right? And so with all of that said and those options in front of you, what is the now what for you? Great question. Um, no campaign, I think, should live in a bubble. You know, you can't just leave it at that once everything is wrapped. I mean, we spend so much time planning learning the strategy, learning the target audience, executing the buy, optimizing the campaign, analyzing the campaign. And at the end of that, you know, as good as it would feel to just wrap a bow on that, send it off to the client and say, here you go, that's, that's a waste of all the effort that was put in. And so what's big for me is taking those learnings and applying it forward. Um, and the way that I do that is on my weekly or bi-weekly statuses, I'm often not just educating the client on specific spaces across all media, but reminding them what we ran and reminding them what we tested and reminding them of the outcome. Because sometimes those results are forgotten. And that's the biggest issue because when a client can remember specifically how well we did on a specific particular channel, the next time they go to design a brand initiative, they may be thinking in terms of a particular media channel. And so they may design their creative as such. And so that's my goal is to build on everything that we do and not let any one particular campaign, whether it's as good as this or something else to go to waste. So it's just taking those learnings and building the client account with that over time. Cool, and so we're about to get the hook. It's literally about to come out and and drag us off stage. And so we're gonna wrap it up here. <laughs> and if you wanted to carry on the conversation at all, Ian and I around all day today, all day tomorrow, hit us up. I love talking about Digital Out of Home because it's amazing how much it's evolved, um, you know, since its conception and it's exciting to know like where it's gonna be in the next day, week, month, year, right? And so just talk to me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it'd be a thrilling conversation, but feel free to hit us up. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you everyone. <laughs>